Hey guys, I just unboxed a really neat product. I just got this in the mail. This is called a burette or burette. I'm not sure on the pronunciation. I saw these being used in Richard Noel's videos, a couple of them. One, he was waxing foundation into frames. And the other, he was showing us what he had picked up from uh, a French bee supply store. So it is uh, double walled. Little pot, you fill it with water here, put your wax in here, of course, and then you pour it here. Got a nice handle. Uh, I think it's going to be a, a superior tool to the wax tube fastener that you can get here in the States, uh, and possibly even the bent spoon that I use. Uh, I looked and I could not find these for sale in the U.S. Uh, I did find some for sale in some French beekeeping websites but I couldn't figure out how to order so I looked and I did find it on eBay uh, it came from China so it took a while uh, the quality is okay welds are a little rough um, it's a simple tool I think that it could really be improved uh, quality wise design wise it looks great but we'll see um, but quality-wise, uh, I could see it being improved. Hopefully, some U.S. manufacturers might see this as a useful tool uh, if it works out and want to provide that. Um, I like watching the European commercial beekeepers because they do things differently um, than our American commercial beekeeper business model. I feel like they do things that are more applicable to the American sideliner. They seem to be smaller operations, more in line with what a sideliner is considered in the United States. And they use different products, uh, different methods. They have uh, different hustles going on that I think you can get a lot from as a, a smaller beekeeping operation in the States. Uh, in the United States, if if you're not palletized and moving bees with the forklift and, and pollinating, then you're not considered a commercial beekeeper, even if you're making your, your livelihood from bees. Um, so I think there's a lot to be learned from watching the European guys. I really enjoy their videos. I enjoy the products that they use and their different techniques as well. I think it's always good to check out uh, different operations, see what they're going on, see if they're doing anything that you can apply to, to your operation to improve it. So I ordered this. I'm excited to give it a try. I got a hot plate heating up over there. I have some uh, wax pieces from molding that I'm going to break up and, and put in this pot. And we're going to get it to temperature and I'm going to come back and test it out for you guys. So I'll be right back. All right, guys, it's a little bit awkward uh, trying to get the camera lined up in my workspace, but the wax is at temperature and we're going to get in here and give it a try Oops, it worked pretty well there We ran a pretty good weld. We'll let that cool a second. All right. And you can see my weld. So, I think it works better than the wax tube fastener. My bent spoon is pretty handy. It could just be because I'm so used to using that. But, I think I need to, to use it quite a bit more and get a feel for it. Uh, get the angle right. I'm not sure having my jig mounted right here is very conducive to, to pouring that way. Uh, I think I need to set it up a different way. 
but I see potential. All right, so one one more thing before we end this video. Uh, the burette came with this silicone queen cell um, mold. So this is for making queen cells to graft into from, from your beeswax. I've never used one of these. Uh, I don't know about the quality of this mold. Most of these are really smooth, except this one here in the end is kind of uh, misshapen. And I don't know if that's going to affect the bees using that particular cell or not. I, I kind of think it would. But we're going to give it a try. And I'm going to let you guys know how it works out. So I'm going to cast these, put some on some bars, and graft into them later on and see how they work. Have a little mold release here. Spray this down. Then I got a bucket of water. Really have no clue what I'm doing here, guys. So. Just bear with me. Tell you one thing I am doing. That's wasting beeswax. Luckily, I have a good bit to spare. My thoughts are to let this cool off a little bit. Then dunk them. Got a bucket of water here, some cool water. This may be the wrong thing to do. Again, I have no idea because it didn't come with instructions and I don't know. I assume it's pretty self-explanatory. Pour wax into it, pop them out. We got one, two, three, four, five times one, two, three, four. So there's 20 to a mold. Roughly 20. Um, let's see what we got. Okay, so the flashing wants to come out. I didn't know how that was going to happen. But that's fine. Pull that off. So, let go. There we go. That's what we got, guys. It's kind of a deep, a deep mold. So you have to, they don't just pop off. You're going to have to uh, drop these in the water. You're going to have to pull them off, which uh, not a big deal. And as they harden up even more so than, than what I had there, um, they're a little bit easier. So it looks like I had a couple that, well, three. But we'll drop them right back down in the burette. I think what happened with those is when I splashed water on the top, it's a little heavy handed with the water, and I displaced the wax on the top. Um, I'm not sure if that's what happened, but that was my theory. I'm curious as to how well this is going to work out. So if you guys have experience with these, let me know. 
how it's worked out for you. That little burette is quite efficient. I don't know if you guys can hear it rumbling over there. I have it on two. I think I need to have it down to one. Once it comes to heat, it uh, it wants to sit there and rattle like a little teapot. Let's uh, let's try this again. This time we'll have my drips go in. To the water bucket. Make sure I get a good feel. I do like that. I, I was concerned maybe wax would drip and pour and um, smoke and cause issues, but it's really a pretty clean pour. This spout comes out so far. Um, so it's pretty neat. All right, so wax has pretty much congealed. Just going to drop her into my water bucket with my drips. Save that, make some more out of that in a minute. Not quite sure how long I should let these cool. That water's pretty cold though, so I think it's probably good. Nope, looks a little too soft. I was going by the color of the wax. If it's still really pale, whitish looking, I know it's it's too hot. And the wax will be really soft and I'll probably tear it. When the top gets a good yellow color, I'm pretty confident it's going to be good and cool. Again, guys, I don't know what I'm doing. Try to get this so you can see inside. Now, I remember one of these corners is the weird is the weird cell and I want to look not this one so So there's our funky cell with the misshapen piece inside. And it definitely does mold over that way. So I'm going to set this to the side and see if I can't find the other one that's in there to uh, keep track of that one. See how the graphs take on that. This one tore a little around the edge. I'm not sure if that matters, but we'll graft it and see.
looks like I uh, did it again and I see what's causing that it's water water bubbles down in the edge of the cell so I didn't have that on the first round because the mold was dry so we're learning as we go guys that if we put water in there we're gonna mess them up The walls are, are shorter and gapped. Now, in my mind, I think the bees will just build that back out, but I'm not sure. So, I've let this run on long enough. Uh, I'm interested in trying out these wax cups. I'm excited about the burette. I think that it's a good tool. And I hope you guys get something out of this video, and I'll catch you around.